Surround yourself with people who share your values, your goals, your interests. That's what we've been talking about here in the Brian Nichols Show for two years, three years now at this point, especially during the COVID insanity. But where do you where do you think you can actually go? Where where in the United States is it the United States that you can possibly move to? I moved to Indiana. There's another state up in the Northeast that's saying libertarians, both big L and small, this place could be your home, the free state, New Hampshire. Yeah, let's talk about that. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, hey there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show, and thank you for joining us on, of course, another fun film episode. I am, as always, your humble host, Joining you from our cardio musical studios here in lovely Eastern Indiana. The Brian Nichols Show is brought to you and powered by Amp America. Really excited to be part of the Amp America team. By the way, if you're watching today's episode uh, before our awesome Twitter X spaces we have coming up here today, uh, we're going to be talking about our brand new uh, little docu, not docu series, but little little series we have over Amp America. The Extremist Files, it was created by uh, Seamus, Co uh, Seamus Coughlin, there we go, yeah, Seamus Coughlin from Freedom Tunes, uh, who he just does some amazing work. So with that, Amp America, go ahead, check out all the awesome stuff we're doing over there, news, uh, news articles, opinion pieces, culture, all that and more. So one more time, Amp America, very excited to be part of the Amp America family. And also, I am personally very excited to be powered by Cardio Miracle, our studio sponsor, and folks, I've been using Cardio Miracle for well over half a year now. And I got to say, I've seen it for myself. The Cardio Miracle difference is 1,000% real. Now, if you are suffering with heart, uh, heart issues, if you're looking to lower your blood pressure, you're trying to increase your pump at the gym, maybe just get a better night's sleep, Cardio Miracle is the answer to your prayers. It has a secret ingredient that is nitric oxide, actually a Nobel Prize winning supplement. And with that, nitric oxide helps lower your blood pressure, give you that better pump at the gym, give you that more restful sleep at night. I'm actually heading to the doctors tomorrow morning for a checkup. I'm actually excited for once to go to the doctors and get my blood pressure taken because last time I went, it was around 120 over 80, exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, for me, with a family of high blood pressure, yeah, I was like, this is my, my lot in life, high blood pressure. But no, Cardio Miracle has, in fact, helped me see better numbers for my blood pressure and all the other benefits I mentioned. So, folks, I want you to experience the Cardio Miracle difference for yourself. Head to the show notes. Link is in the description or just head to CardioMiracle.com. Use code TBNS. Stands for The Brian Nichols Show. 15% off your order if you use that code right there at checkout. And I guarantee, folks, you have nothing to lose. But don't take my word for it because there is a 100% money-back guarantee. So head over to the show notes. Again, briannicholshow.com or cardiomiracle.com, wherever it's easier. Take advantage of this awesome, awesome offer to our amazing audience here at The Brian Nichols Show. And I guarantee your heart will thank you. Cardiomiracle.com, the best heart health supplement in the world. All right. That's enough about uh, heart health supplements and, and making your, your ticker better. How do you make your, your mental health better? And specifically where you live, right? I told my story back a few years ago. Uh, I was miserable. I lived in Philadelphia, PA for about seven years. All of a sudden COVID hits and the insanity that followed thereafter and watching time and again, people you thought were at least sane, rational, logical thinking people. Nope. Emotions, fear just hits them like a ton of bricks. And all of a sudden they're willing to do whatever the heck they're told to do. And that's a little scary. So uh, it's important, right? To surround yourself with people who share your values, who share your principles, who share your goals. And that's what I did. I moved to Indiana, but is Indiana the only place you can move to? Of course, it's not the only state. Um, we had our good friend, Mikel Thorpe. He's talking about going out and building uh, building your, your experiences and your home abroad, uh, doing the expat approach to, uh, to living. But what if you don't need to go overseas? What if, believe it or not, there's a state up in the Northeast, I know, the Northeast of all places, that's actually a free state and is standing there as a beacon, not just to Big L libertarians, but small L libertarians alike to discuss all that and more from the free state of New Hampshire. Mark Warden, welcome to the Brian Nichols Show. How are you? Brian, it's great to be here. I'm honored. Like like your work and you have some great guests, so I'm proud to be one of them. 
great to have you on the show, Mark. You're, you're doing amazing work up in New Hampshire because not only are you being an advocate for folks to come to the free state, but you're actually helping sell them some houses so they have a place to live when they head up there. But before we go ahead and dig into that, and I put the cart before the horse, of course, do me a favor. Let's introduce yourself here to the Brian Nichols Show audience, but specifically, Mark, what is it about this Liberty world that got you so focused and so on board to the point you find yourself up in New Hampshire selling all these libertarians who are heading your way a bunch of houses? Mark, the floor is yours. Uh, well, thank you. I found libertarianism in my mid-30s, so I was sort of a late adopter compared to a lot of young people today. And I was living out in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wasn't really involved in politics, didn't think much about that or ideology. But somehow I bumped into the Libertarian Party folks there. They invited me in, went to some meetings. They said, here, read this book. I read Alice Shrug, read uh, 101, um, you know, Harry Hazlitt, uh, Economics in One Easy Lesson, things like that. And I just gained all the knowledge I could, talk to people, learning more about it. And it really spoke to me. This whole idea of live and let live, leave people alone as long as you're not hurting them or taking their stuff. Even though I'm just like socially a little bit more conservative, I started to learn more and more about the non-aggression principle, about uh, social libertarianism, whether that's smoking pot or, and conservative uh, fiscal libertarianism and not taxing people so much. So even though I started out on more of the low tax side of things, I quickly learned to appreciate all the other aspects of this theory and this ideology. So I, after a few years out in Las Vegas, I started to get more interested in politics. I actually ran as a candidate under the Libertarian Party mantle, just as on a lark, you know, for fun back in 2000. Uh, but as I did, I got more interested in the process and how, how somebody who's involved in politics might really be able to make a difference in people's lives and public policy. Well, I quickly learned that that's just bang your head against the wall to run as a Libertarian. Uh, <laughs> No matter how right the ideas might be, people just aren't ready for that in our two-party system. So the next time around, I ran as a Republican, sort of a liber liberty-leaning Republican, and lost in a, a primary. But it gave me the, the taste of it, and I got the bug to get more involved in politics. This is early 2000s, and right around 2004, 2005, I heard about the Free State Project, which is this sort of mass migration of people moving to New Hampshire with the idea to attract attract libertarians, anarcho-capitalists, constitutionalists, classical liberals, minarchists, all those all those uh, labels you want to give it to. Anybody who wants to just be left alone, who wants less government and more individual freedom, they're going to concentrate these folks in the small state of New Hampshire. Uh, it was really a, an amazing idea, and I cogitated on it for a couple of years. My, my job was going great. My career was doing really well in Las Vegas. I had a lot of friends there, but... It, after this festered, you know, I, I got red pill, and eventually in 2007, I made the move, packed up all my belongings, rented out my house, quit my job, and moved to New Hampshire. So fast forward, I've been here since 2007. Um, the amazing part has been being with so many like-minded people. I built a business, so we can talk about it if you'd like, and uh, it really was, there was never a better example of this tribe, of this community than during the COVID lockdowns and all the mandates where we were acting pretty normally among our group of like-minded people. I mean, middle of summer of 2020, everybody was masked down, uh, social distancing, you know, wiping things down with the uh, sanitizer, but we were still going to regular social events among our own group groups, going to parties, uh, weddings, hugging, shaking hands, all that stuff. So that's where we are today. So I'm going to ask Matt Edwards this question tonight on the uh, the X spaces, the Twitter spaces we're doing. We're talking about the new Amp America show, The Extremist Files, and that is the importance of building a small L libertarian culture. Uh, now, if we go back to the late, great Andrew Breitbart, he had the quote, politics is downstream from culture. I firmly 1000% agree. And what we've done here on the show is we've embraced that approach, but also with the understanding that there, there's kind of like this chain of events, right? In order to change politics, you have to be able to change the politicians. In order to change the politicians, you have to change the folks who are nominating those, those elected or those, those politicians. In order to change the folks 
who are nominating those elect or those uh, folks running for office, you have to change the folks in the seats that are in those respective political parties. And to change the folks who are in the seats, you have to change the minds of folks within those areas, which goes back to step one, changing the culture. And culture is, it, it sounds easy, right? Oh, just go ahead and have a, a libertarian movie, start a libertarian uh, book club, all these little things that we think, oh, that's the easy answer, but maybe it is for our little circle of libertarians, but beyond building culture, it, it's more than just the ism, right, Mark? And I want you to maybe articulate this for the audience because I see this, and I'm not picking on anybody in particular, but I was just at the Libertarian Party of Indiana State Convention here, and I heard a lot of folks who they they live and breathe the ism, that is libertarianism, but they, they seem to really miss the mark when it comes to building something beyond the ism, building something that transcends politics, transcends the, the, uh, the philosophy, and actually build something culturally significant. So, Mark, you guys have done something very, very cool up in, in New Hampshire, and that is building a small L libertarian uh, society, but you're doing so through culture. And I want to hear from you what you're seeing as you know, successful means to build culture. And frankly, what the heck can we do differently outside of New Hampshire in these other 49 states to have the success you guys are having? The first step is always to be a good example, be a mm. good neighbor, be a great parent, be a good friend, be a good coworker, employee, employer, uh, live your values, maybe even articulate your values, but those are secondary to behaving well. So there are many paths to liberty. As you mentioned, culture is a big one. And a lot of libertarian types are more logical. I mean, they're into tech, uh, math, they think very logically. They don't get, they don't like these emotional arguments that most politicos use. But we have to realize that not everybody resonates with those. We see how popular politicians are who just appeal to people's emotions, to their fears. And we need to do a little bit better job of that as we promote liberty. So I like to tell people many paths to liberty. One is through politics. One is through the legal system. One is through education. You know, do homeschooling, uh, send your kids to private schools, offer tutoring to maybe other kids in the neighborhood where we can steal some of our pro-liberty values, our classical liberal values in others. Uh, so they're not just hearing the indoctrination they get at the government schools. Also build businesses, right? The stronger we can get in our own economic and cultural ecosystem, the better we are to be prepared to ex extend our power and our influence and our reach in the future. Um, so let's look at all these ways and you have to do what works for you as an individual activist. I've been involved in sales for many, many years, sales and marketing in the real estate business and prior to that in industrial equipment. So for me, I mean, it's easy to talk to people and uh, try to be influential and in in encourage them to you know, see things a different way, but maybe somebody else, it's about growing food, being a farmer, uh, doing outreach that way, or just being a good employee, or raising your kids and then you're chatting up the moms, the other moms at soccer practice. So we have to, I, the point is, do what works for you and just get out there and, and be bold and tell others the way you think. You know, Mark, you're, you're painting the picture here. And for folks who are listening, um, I'm sure that they're hearing uh, this this rhyme, right? That the meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. How how frequently we hear libertarians, both big L and small, who they will go through and th they're they're convinced that just because I I know the principles, I know the philosophy, that that's that's all I have to tell people. That once they hear this great idea, that's all it takes. They're going to be on board. But much like you articulated, Mark, you know, if you go into the world of sales. It doesn't matter how good your product is. Like I work in the contact center space and there are some customers out there, or, uh, competition uh, that's out there and they tout a phenomenal, phenomenal technology, but it doesn't matter if they don't know how to sell it. And we see this time and again with libertarians. We have a great, beautiful philosophy, but just having that great, beautiful philosophy, it's not enough. You have to be able to then bring that and yes, sell it to believe it or not, folks, I know this is hard to hear folks who aren't libertarian already. 
I know, I know. Sit down. I heard you all collectively stand up getting ready to walk out the door. But believe it or not, in order to grow our movement, we have an obligation to reach people outside of our circle, meaning outside of our libertarian echo chambers, and actually talk to people who aren't libertarian. So with all that, Mark, you're up in the free state. You've been there now for going on 20 years. I'm sure, <laughs> I can almost guarantee that not everybody in said free state is in fact either a big L or small L libertarian. Heck, you're a small L libertarian and you you ran for office as a big R Republican. So there is, it seems like some yin in, and yang when it comes to New Hampshire and the, the cultural arena, when it connects to the political arena. How has New Hampshire embraced libertarians or are you guys experiencing maybe not so warm of a welcome? What's, what's that look like? It, it's a little bit of both and it's a mixed mm. bag, but we like to say that New Hampshire has a history and a culture of liberty. Now, people may not call it libertarianism. They may just call it leave us alone-ism, but the, a good example is the state motto of New Hampshire is live free or die. And you know we love that. It's on every license plate. It's on every flag. Uh, so people will uh, say that there's been a longstanding you know, Second Amendment uh, freedom here, pretty good low taxes. It's a very low tax state with no income tax, no sales tax. So these are already good places to start for the libertarian movement. But in general, in this state, the vast majority of people have never heard of the Free State Project. And that's fine. The, the politicos, people who are super interested in politics, certainly know about us. The more conservative types who want less government, they love what we're doing. In fact, we've uh, been empowered because of their support. We've really been able to join forces in this perfect storm of, of uh, small government activists, farmers, rural people, and the Free State Project have really uh, sort of made our presence more impactful. But of course, you have those on the other side, the, the lefties, the, the Democrat activists who call us extremists. In fact, there's even a, a hate group that follows uh, everything we do at the Free State Project. They put us on lists. They call us extremists. Uh, so we wear that as a badge of honor. But to your earlier point about being able to speak to people and not just you know bash them over the head with libertarianism values initially, I neglected to mention I, after I came here, I did run for office. I was elected to the planning board. I also got elected to the state legislature four different times and served eight years. And when I go door to door meeting voters, I don't just you know say, hi, would you like to talk about the non-aggression principle? <laughs> no, <laughs> we start out just with a, a, a friendly smile, a handshake, and I want to hear from them what, what things are interested in, uh, interesting them or what their, their uh, concerns are. And to be honest, most voters, talk about local issues like the pothole out front or the crappy schools, which aren't impacted that much by what the state legislature does. But, you know, it's a good conversation starter and an icebreaker. And as long as you're nice to them and, you, and they remember your name, you stick a, a flyer in their in their hands and say, hey, remember me on voting day. And that's proved to be very successful. And then when in, in office, when I'm up in the legislature, of course, I'm uh, very true to my libertarian pro-liberty beliefs and have a very uh, good voting record that's you know, that's been recorded by certain uh, groups. So that's how you do it to be su successful. If you were at the Libertarian Party of Indiana State Convention last weekend, you, you basically heard me in the three-hour session I did take what Mark just said in 15 seconds and, and build it over a three-hour period. That That is, at, at the end of the day, what it comes down to, right? Yeah. Meeting the voter where they're at on the issues they care about, which predominantly end up being not the national, the national or even, heck, the state-level conversations or issues, but quite literally the most local issues possible. There's potholes outside of my house. Yeah. The garbage isn't getting picked up on time. Homelessness is everywhere. Those are the issues that actually resonate to people. And, and I don't know, Mark, like, do we get in our own ways? And, and I'm going to ask you this as a libertarian because I, I see this happen time and again. We we want people to, to come into our movement, and yet we end up being the most, like, exclusionary group of folks when we realize that the people we're bringing in starting out aren't libertarian and we're confused by that. And we end up, I think, with our dogma pushing folks away. Is that something you're seeing or is maybe New Hampshire doing things a little bit differently up there? Uh, I think that's 
omnipresent. I think you'll find that in every voting district in every state around the country, where the more involved you get in any kind of organization, certainly a political organization, uh, there's going to be a lot of infighting. Everybody thinks his or her way is the best. And we quibble over, you know, the, the 5% or the 2% of things we disagree on instead of uh, celebrating and pushing forward the 95% of things we agree on. So I think that's just the nature of the beast. People who get involved in politics, like in many ways, the, the power and the influence. Um, so all we can do is keep spreading the gospel that let's work together. Let's do more outreach. Let's get to the masses who still don't know our message and let them learn about it in a friendly way. Mark, if uh, libertarians are interested in moving up to this free state, now, by the way, I'm going to preface this question with uh, a statement, and that is in two weeks, we're having a uh, new executive director of the Free State Project and good friend of the show and good personal friend, Eric Brakey here back in the program. And uh, he's going to make his case of why I need to uh, leave Indiana to move to uh, the great state of New Hampshire. But do me a favor, Mark, um, help make the case beyond what Eric's going to make in a few weeks. To the folks in the audience, you know, how, how does one start to make that move up to New Hampshire? And I mean, pfft, if they need to buy a house, I don't know even where they would start there. Mark, what do you think? Look over there. In fact, I, I don't know if you can see one sign over uh, that shoulder, but I, I've i sold three houses for Bitcoin in New Hampshire. So we're, we're trying to do all the things libertarian here and uh, to put our money where our mouth is and do things right. But certainly start out by going to the website, which is fsp.org, freestateproject.org. And we really encourage people to come out for a visit and the best time to do that is in the summer when it's just gorgeous in New Hampshire. Everything is so You mean green. it's not in the middle of the winter when it's negative 30? Some people like that. They're just skiing and snow, uh, snowboarding. But come in the summer, it's only in the 80, mid-80s, lush, green everywhere. And we have a huge week-long festival we call Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's Porkfest for short, porkfest.com. And we get nearly 2,000 people attending this week-long conference. Imagine the Mises Institute, Mises Institute meets um, uh, meets uh, was it a big uh, I don't know, music festival or something mm. like that Woodstock. It, it's just really an amazing thing with hundreds of speakers, hundreds of little groups. We also have people doing playing live music and kids doing the kids Olympics, playing sports, playing frisbee, just hanging out, having a beer, uh, it's solving all the world's problems. But you have all these very family friendly. It's a great way to tour the state of New Hampshire, meet a lot of us early movers, and really get a better feel for the diverse group that we have. Over 6,000 people have moved to New Hampshire because of the Free State Project and are considered part of our, our group, if you will, of our tribe. So come out, meet them, see what we're doing in real life, IRL, to, uh, to advance liberty in our lifetime. We've had a lot of folks here on the show from from the free state, um, you know, fo spokes, folks, spokes, folks. That's a new one. I like that. Spokes, folks um, for for FSP. We've had Carla Garrick on the show. We've had Eric on the show. Heck, we've had Jeremy Kaufman on the show. We've had all the folks in between here on the show from from New Hampshire. And you know what? I, I will say this, Mark, like the, the diverse group of, of libertarians up there in New Hampshire, it really does speak to. This is this is the way, right? To, to channel my my inner Mandalorian. This is the way. And if if we want to, you know, this will be my final thought, and I'll turn things over to you for for your final thought. But we we talk so much, and we hear the debates of you know that the pragmatists, you have the principled folks in the libertarian movement. Do we want to win elections? Do we want to win over hearts and minds? Do we want to educate people? What's the approach that wins? What you're doing in New Hampshire? is the approach that wins. And here's the reality, folks. It's not a, a one-size-fits-all approach. It is a combination of approaches that will lead to long-term viability and success. And that is exactly what states like New Hampshire are doing. Heck, I'm going to go ahead and, and tout a state like Indiana. Indiana has done a phenomenal job at building the Libertarian Party and the Libertarian culture to become one of the the leading idea or mentalities here in the state from a cultural perspective. And we, we got to reiterate the importance of the culture, right? You can't build a libertarian uh, political system unless the people in that system are on board with liberty. So that's why when we built the show, right, we talked about the importance of the principles that are over, over my shoulder over here, educate, 
enlighten and inform. It's not just a matter of saying, here, read this book. Like, okay, reading the book is great, but your average person isn't going to take your offer of reading this 400 page Murray Rothbard book. They're just not, they're, they're a mom. They're, they're going to the grocery store to hope that, you know, that the hundred dollars that they have for groceries that week is going to be able to maybe fill the cart three quarters, half, maybe if they're lucky, those are the things that people actually worry about. So looking at what you're doing in New Hampshire, what we see work here in Indiana and some other more pro small L Liberty States, uh, there, there is a path. And I just want to say to folks out there who feel that, man, just we're facing this Leviathan of a state, Democrats and Republicans, nobody's paying attention. No, it's not that people aren't paying attention. It's just, it, they're not paying attention the way you want them to. And sometimes we have to take a step back and realize that it's not a matter of people meeting us where we are, but rather we have to meet them where they are. That's my final thoughts for today. Mark, what do you have for us on your end? I want people to remember that community is important. And one of the things to keep in mind for everybody in the other 49 states is that when you get together with other libertarians, you're lucky to get 20 or 30 or 50 people in the room at the same time. We have that all the time in New Hampshire with over 6,000 people spread statewide. I mean, every Tuesday night here in Manchester, there, which is a city of only about 120,000 people, we'll get together for burgers and beers on a Tuesday night, and usually 20 to 30 people will come regularly. Out on the seacoast, they'll have Bitcoin meetups with a dozen people. And then when we have our big events like Pork Fest or uh, New Hampshire Liberty Forum, we'll get hundreds together. And this is important. It's nice to have people that have your back. We have, when we do a protest, we'll have 50, 100 people show up. When we go to the state house testify, we have dozens show up. If you have a court case and you're trying to fight the man, you know, we have seen, I've seen us pack a courtroom with 50 supporters of our friends. So this kind of thing is something you're not going to experience anywhere else in the world if you're a libertarian. So come check out New Hampshire. Mark Warden, I cannot agree more. And that's a great call to action for folks in the audience. So please go ahead and uh, give Mark some love. Also, porcupinerealestate.com if you are interested in checking out the great state of New Hampshire. And you know what? Maybe you, you, you checked it out and you say, hey, honey, I think we're going to make the move. Give Mark a call. And heck, if you had some Bitcoin there that you've been holding on to for 15, 20 years, it might just go ahead and buy a house. So uh, make sure you go ahead, give Mark some love. And when you do, please let him know that you heard him over here on the Brian Nichols show. Because I know my guests love to hear uh, that you know folks heard them on the show. And give Mark some love. I know that uh, we, we love to share Share the love here at the Brian Nichols Show. So what did you learn on the episode, folks? We want to hear it. Go down below into the comments. And by the way, where what what comments are am I talking about? Well, we have a couple different versions of the show, Mark. We have video as well as audio. So if you want to go to the videos and you want to leave those comments, let us know your thoughts. You, you can go to your traditionals, YouTube, Rumble. We also upload our videos in their entirety to Twitter, x.com, as well as Facebook. And uh, folks, if you go ahead and check us out over there, like I said, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell, and head below down in the comments. Let us know your thoughts. Did you move to the great state of New Hampshire? And if so, what's been your experience? Or are you living in a maybe not so free state? What would it take to get you to take this the, the step to actually move to New Hampshire? We want to hear. So, and by the way, I'm sure Mark and uh, Eric Brakey there from the Free State Project are going to want to hear as well because they kind of want to get you to move up there. So, with that being said, head below in the comments. Let us know your thoughts or if you're a podcast type of person, you just like listening to these types of shows, I get you. I'm the exact same way. So we're a podcast as well. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music, I Like Podcast Addict, wherever it is you get your podcast, just do me a favor. Frankly, do yourself a favor. Hit download all unplayed episodes. And here's the reason why. Since 2018, we in the Brian Nichols Show, we've been talking about meeting people where they're at, on the issues they care about, leaving folks educated, enlightened, and informed. And with that, we have over 815 episodes of the Brian Nichols Show, digging through economists, elected officials. We've had entrepreneurs. We've had activists, authors, all of that and more. And I guarantee of those episodes, you're going to find dozens of, of folks, dozens of conversations that will leave you, members of the audience, educated and enlightened and informed. So yes, hit download all unplayed episodes. Check out some of our past conversations with some other amazing folks from New Hampshire, like uh, the aforementioned uh, Carla Garrick or Jeremy Kaufman or Eric Brakey or even today, Mark Warden. So uh, folks, we really appreciate the love and support we get from you 
in the audience. And also, uh, I know when it comes to how we keep the lights on here, it is that love and support that keeps us going. But unfortunately, the love doesn't pay the bills. So if you want to help support The Brian Nichols Show, help us keep having phenomenal conversations with folks like Mark. I mean, goodness, folks, we're over 815 episodes here at the show. As much as I do it out of the kindness and love that I have of my heart for this, this topic and this conversation, I need help. So if you could please support the folks who support us, and that is our sponsors. Yes, I would love a one-time donation from you, but I want you to have something that you can actually tangibly get in return. So whether it's our, our sponsors over at Cardio Miracle, Ebel CBD, Liquid Freedom Energy Tea, Blood of Tyrants, uh, BNC Technology Advisors. Heck, we have our awesome friends over at Proud Libertarian where you can go ahead and get your good ideas. Don't require force snapback like I'm rocking here today. You can use all that and more. Just do me a favor. Use your uh, discount code TBNS at checkout. $10 off, 10% off. 15% off here all over the place. Just please go ahead and support the folks who support us at the Brian Nichols show. I think that's all I have for us today. Mark, any final words for the audience as we wrap things up? Brian, thank you very much for your time. And um, let's do all we can to keep on living free. Amen. Can't agree more. And with that being said, one more time, porcupinerealestate.com. Mark Warden has been an absolute pleasure. Really looking forward to my conversation in a few weeks with Eric Brakey. I got to tell him that you're uh, you're going to be the, the, the New Hampshire real estate guy. So anybody heading up to, uh, to the great state of New Hampshire, please give Mark a call. Uh, make sure you have your Bitcoins ready. Uh, but with that being said, that's all we have for you today. Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show. For Mark Warden, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.